Transfigured on the mount, O Christ our God, revealing thy glory to thy disciples as far as they could bear it. Let thy Hi there. Welcome back to another episode of Be Transfigured, where we invite you to live a new life in Christ. My name is Father Athanasios Heros, and I'm the pastor here at the Transfiguration of Our Savior Greek Orthodox Church in Florence, South Carolina. Today is the Sunday of Orthodoxy. It's the day the Church declares the truth of Orthodoxy, the faith of the Apostles, the faith which has established the universe. I'll be back in a moment. If I say the word, so, do you all know what I'm talking about? So. It could mean a lot of things, right? So what? It could mean I'm going to sew a button on my pants. It could mean I'm going to sow seeds in my garden. Anything else? So, I don't think so means anything else. Just those three things. So the same word, at least to our ears, means different things. Today, my brothers and sisters, we're going to discuss the difference between words. What I mean is this. Today, we celebrate the Sunday of Orthodoxy, the day that the church declares the victory of the faith, the victory of the teachings and the faith of the fathers. At the end of the liturgy, we're going to have a procession with the icons, and we're going to de declare this is the faith of the apostles. What does it mean to declare this is the faith of the apostles? To many people, those simple words could mean different things. So much so that we know that there's more than 40,000 denominations of Christianity in the world all claiming to be the faith of the apostles. But we couldn't all possibly be the same thing. It must be something different in the words we use. And so this morning, what I want to offer you is this, something very simple. We are in the middle of a great Lenten journey a journey that is designed by the fathers of our church to guide us into a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ, to have a more intimate relationship with the creator of the universe. And there was a time when there were people in the Christian world who believed that the church taught incorrectly about something as simple as holy icons. There was a movement, and we know from history, that it was influenced by Islam, and Islam has, as you know, a forbiddance of having any pictures of any holy people. Influenced by this, there were some in the church that began saying that to have icons in our church, such as the icon of Jesus Christ, was wrong. These people, we call them the iconoclasts, began destroying the icons, saying that they were graven images, that they were idols. Now you see, here's one of those words that can mean something to one person, and something completely different to another person. Icon. We have an icon of Jesus Christ. As Orthodox Christians, we bow down in front of that icon. We kiss that icon. We light candles in front of that icon. We burn incense in front of that icon. We take, as we're going to today, we take the icons and we process around our homes. Is that idolatry? Are we worshiping that wood, that paint, that gold that is in the holy icon? We say no. Others say yes. There are some still in the Christian church today that when they come and visit our church, they won't even come inside the doors. 
They peek through the windows and they see the holy icons of Christ and the Panagia and John the Baptist and all the other icons in our church and they will not come inside because they have been led to believe that these holy icons are idols. Who's right? We are. We are the Orthodox Church. This is the faith of the Apostles. And yet, my brothers and sisters, 39,999 other denominations are leading people away from the truth. But we Orthodox have a responsibility. That is why, weather permitting, we're going to go outside with our icons today to show the world the truth of orthodoxy. The truth is not relative like some believe. If the truth were relative, then 40,000 denominations of Christianity would be correct. But there's only one truth. Either God is or he isn't. Either icons are idols or they are not idols. Who has it right? We do, of course. We're the Orthodox Church. We maintain the faith given to us by the Holy Apostles. Listen to the words of St. Paul. These teachings of the Holy Apostles that we have maintained so carefully now for 2,000 years, he says that the other people, those who came before us, protected these truths for us. Listen to some of the things they went through so we could have the faith. He says, they were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had a trial by mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were tempted, they were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. These holy men and women, my brothers and sisters, protected this truth of orthodoxy. So why should we not honor them by placing their icons in our churches? This icon, for example, of St. Catherine, the all-wise St. Catherine, so brilliant and so beautiful a young woman. And she went and debated the emperor, and because of his anger and ego killed her. Not just killed her, but rolled her through town, you see in her icon, on a wheel of spikes. That's how dedicated St. Catherine was to the truth of God. But it's not just in the olden days. There are people today in 2015 that are being slaughtered for the truth of orthodoxy because they refuse to give up their faith. This faith, my brothers and sisters, is what we've inherited. This is the faith of the orthodox. This is the faith of the apostles. This is the faith that has established the universe. A faith that Jesus Christ came and lived among us so that we could live eternally with him. He took on all of our human flesh. He took on our entire human nature even unto death so that we would no longer be bound by death. This is why for us it is so important that we have icons. Because the icon of Jesus Christ, because we saw him, we felt him, we spoke with him, we ate with him. He was in our midst for 33 years. And the church says, because he was real, 
is real. It is good to paint his icon. I like to think if we had never painted icons of Jesus Christ, imagine for a moment a world with no icons of Jesus Christ. Don't you think someone by now would say, you Christians, you believe in a person who doesn't exist. No one's even painted a picture of him. I mean, think about that. We have pictures of Nero. We have pictures of Julius Caesar. We have pictures of Alexander the Great. We have pictures of the pharaohs. We have pictures of all of these famous people from ancient history. Imagine if we didn't have a picture of Jesus Christ. What would the world say to us? Clearly he wasn't real. All the real people have pictures painted of them. So the next time people say to you, you Orthodox, you worship idols, you say, no, we do not worship idols. We worship the living God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God who came into the world to save us, who lived as one of us. This is the faith of the apostles. And that's what we are celebrating today, this first Sunday of Great Lent. But it's not just so important for us to remember who we are. This great faith is not up here. It's in our hands and it's in our feet. This great faith that we call orthodoxy is something that we live, my brothers and sisters. We do not declare the truth of orthodoxy just so we can have beautiful icons. The icons are simply to remind us that we are united to the king of the universe. They are to remind us to live a holy life so we surround ourselves with icons because we know we cannot escape God. But if we live our life foreign, alien to the icons, if we live our life void, absent of icons, doing our own thing, doing what we think is always right, instead of what the church teaches us, guided by the Holy Spirit, we are not living orthodoxy. When we make up our own rules, we are not living orthodoxy. When we decide what is true and what is not true in the Holy Scriptures, we are not living orthodoxy. Orthodoxy, my brothers and sisters, is given to us by the Holy Apostles. The Apostles such as Nathaniel, Philip, Nathaniel goes and he says, come on, Philip. We have found the one that Moses was writing about. He believed so fervently, so deeply, that he went immediately to his friends and he said, you've got to come and see this. You are going to be amazed what we found. But what do we do? We keep our faith to ourselves. We keep it locked away in our coat pocket. Shh, yeah, I'm orthodox, but eh, don't worry about it. If this is the faith that established the universe, my brothers and sisters, if this is the faith that saves the universe, why aren't we more like Nathaniel and going to get Philip? Why aren't we more like the apostles who couldn't stop preaching the Word of God? Why do we insist on keeping it to ourselves? When we keep this faith to ourselves, we dishonor the icons of Christ. Because Jesus Christ commanded us, he says, go forth to all nations, to all people. 
He says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to keep all that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always until the end of the age. Yet most of us, we keep our orthodoxy in that beautiful little, you know, that little pocket calendar, nice and in our, tight in our wallet, and it never comes out. It never shows itself in our actions, and it never shows ourselves in our discussions with our friends. Prove me wrong. Fill this church with people like Philip who are seeking God. Fill this church with your friends and neighbors who are seeking God by telling them, come and see the exact words that Nathaniel said. Come and see. We have found the Christ. We have found the Savior of the universe. If we really believe in this truth that we proclaim today, we would not stop, my brothers and sisters, reaching out and inviting every single person we encounter into this church. This is the faith of the Orthodox. This is the faith of the Apostles. This is the faith which has established the universe. Glory to God for all things. Well, I'm back, and my question for you is, does your faith affect the way you live, or is it just something you believe? A true Orthodox Christian, as Nathaniel and Philip, goes and shares the good news and invites people to come and see. The faith is in our hands, in our feet, in the way we live our life. Orthodoxy is to be lived, my brothers and sisters. Won't you join us? Visit us on our website at liveanewlifeinchrist.org where you can find more information about the Orthodox Christian Church. You can also find us at myocn.net, the Orthodox Christian Network. Until next week, God bless you, and don't forget to live a new life in Christ. Be Transfigured is a production of the Transfiguration of Our Savior Greek Orthodox Church in Florence, South Carolina, and presented by the Orthodox Christian Network. Contributions and support of this ministry may be sent to Be Transfigured, 2990 South Cashua Drive, Florence, South Carolina, 29501, or online at our website at www dot live a new life in Christ dot org.